and we are live. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time. Live streaming. Did with I start J with the cough? You did start no. with the cough, Jason Fafwe. Good morning, oh. sir. Welcome and hello. Hello, Pat. Good to see you, bro. You too, brother. Hey, um, I was thinking, uh, okay. not to... Not to take the mic too much, but uh, you know, as the brother of the broadcast slash digital communications manager, you had a bit of a struggle there with Zoom this morning. That doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> He'd be sitting there laughing at me, saying, "What a dummy lips!" But you know, it'd be right. Isn't this crazy though? This is the new world we live in. This is you know, like for eighteen months we were doing this um, podcast, and it was like we'll do it with people when they're in Dunedin, and I was kind of a little bit of a podcast snob. And we went, oh, no, I don't really want to do them online. I don't want to do this, that, that. You don't get the same feel. You don't get the same vibe. You know, I want to be able to feel and touch and, you know, connect. And now it's like you're forced to it. And it's kind of great, actually. Really enjoying it. It's like it. talking to people all over the world because because they don't have to be in the same, well, not my bedroom, but in my studio with me. Yeah, I've been admiring that, that, that lighting setup you got there. That's pretty dope, man. It's, it's um, Yeah, I've, I've had to say to several people, it is not, even though we can make it, um, a bit more like a porn <laughs> site. It's not. It's actually... Mate, mate, that's Pornhub. What are you doing? <laughs> it's actually uh, LEDs I put up specifically for this to try and hide the disgustingly horrible 90s wallpaper. But I'm excited no, to say... you better than me. Look at... Where am I? No, yours looks good. You got the ukulele, the ukulele back then. I had one in my background yesterday because oh, there it is over there. Because I was speaking to a musician from um, Cat McDowell, who was based in Los Angeles, who's legendary on the ukulele. So you got the yeah. So hey, listen. Um, well, what do we do? Well, we don't really have an agenda for this sort of podcast thing. We just spit. Like we just spit shit and see what comes out. But mate, if you want, if, if it's shit you want, mate, I'm there. <laughs> I'm your man. But we should, we, I mean, I'd probably be smart to start with. I mean, you were probably, uh, you know, on everyone's screens and incredibly high profile in that kind of legendary team from what now, the late 90s, early 2000s. And it was legendary. Yeah. Um, you know, there seems to be a couple of legendary teams and, and you and Siobhan and Anthony were kind of one of them. And obviously Carolyn was in there as well. And I, I was trying to think the other day, oh, props boy. Sorry, I was just trying to think the name of the character. You know, there was, and, and that was a, yeah, and that was a, that was a legendary time for what now? Uh, so legendary, in fact, that, you know, I was in my 20s and even people in their 20s sort of still knew what was going on because so much was made of it. And it was that perfect blend of, um, you know, children's television, but entertaining and fun. And, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, I mean, people in their 20s now probably don't know what's happening with Saturday morning TV, but, because it was so good, people knew. It was part of the pop culture. I guess that's the way to say yeah. it. Well, I was, yeah, like I, I always thank my lucky stars that I got to um, hang out with that, that bunch of uh, uh, friends because, um, you know, it, it, we knew that we were doing something that was fun. Yeah. Honestly, going to work felt like hanging out with your mates and because we honestly hung out as friends outside of the show. You know, that, that was our circle of friends. It wasn't like we all wrapped up and took the makeup off and and went home and did our own things. Oh, there were often times we would just go back to someone's house, yeah, hang out for the rest of the day, <laughs> the cool. Sunday morning show, and go back, cook a feed, and hang out, have a few drinks, and muck around at um, each other's houses. It was really cool. It was a good time and a good bunch of people, like genuinely nice people to work with and funny, and they were all dicks, you know, in, <laughs> in a good way. They were. Um, that they, they weren't precious or anything and um, they, they were willing to share knowledge. Like if you were the new presenter on the block, yep. you know, it would be easy to think that someone who's like nearing the end of their, their, their time on a show would kind of be a bit little bitter and twisted and didn't want to share all the secrets, but not that bunch of people. They were all really good, especially when I turned up on the scene. Um, Anthony, what a guy, man. Uh, I, I, I remember saying a few things at a, one of the reunion shows that we had and just just talking about Anthony it almost made me want to cry because he's mm -hmm. such a good dude you know one of those good dudes and uh, you still stand up now like we, we hung out like not long before lockdown we, we had one of our friends from the show I don't know if you heard about um, the, the guy who played Thingy Alan Henderson yes passed away he passed away yeah and, you know, um, we all got together. I saw a whole lot of um, faces that I hadn't seen in years, you know, 20 years, some of these people. And that family vibe is still there, you know, with, with those people. It's 
something special that will never fade. Yeah. I'm like, you know, glory days, hanging out with these. I'm, cro- I'm starting to choke up now talking about them, mate. <laughs> yeah, but what a great bunch of people. All of them were fantastic and very much family. And probably without even knowing at the time, I mean, I my background started in sort of the the media world, whatever the hell that is, working in radio. And the ones, the teams that were most successful and rated the best were the ones that were genuinely mates. I mean, I was in the Auckland market, so it was Kim and Corbett. And yep. there was uh, uh, Nick and Rog, I think it was, over on The Rock. And there was Brenton Lance in the afternoon on More FM. And... It seemed that all the guys and girls, uh, you know, and it was Polly and Grant, I think they were on ZF at the time, husband and wife, that were genuinely close for them off mic, for you guys off camera, um, yep. were the ones that were most successful as well. Because I guess that gives you that, that something extra that you can't read in a script or, or, or you know, fake that genuine relationship. And I, and I think that's, you know, I think about um, Simon Barnett and Phil Gifford when they did more of him in Christchurch, you know, they were... Uh, relationship yeah. off screen, off the mic, uh, is what seems to make something amazing on screen and on the oh, mic. Right. And obviously, it's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. Was, um, just those moments when you're doing something like live television, and you know it's it's all on the line when you're doing it, and you, you got so many other people's jobs relying on you hitting your mark when you've got to do certain things. You know, if you if you work on a show like that, it's um, it, it can be quite hectic. Yeah, you, there's just so much going on, and while all this is going on, we're still having our internal like jokes going on within the show. So yep. like, we're taking the piss out of each other and doing knowing looks and things off camera that had nothing to do with the show. Was us just um, um, giving each other a hard time, mm-hmm. and um, even that was involved in the show. So it was all, all these things going on, and you kind of felt like. You're in this really fun gang that can take the piss, and you kind of see it see it a lot now. I know you were saying that you enjoy watching a lot of um, podcasts, yeah, yeah, from the states. Yeah. A lot of the comedians, and you, you know, like the um, like the Brendan Shaws and the Theo Vaughns and yep. Brian Cullen and all that. And um, you see those guys just just joking around, taking the piss, and roasting each other all the time. And we we kind of had that thing back then, but you know it's within reason because you're doing a kids' TV show. But there were lots of moments where we had our little private jokes in there as well, and taking the piss out of the directors when they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, when they're telling us to wrap things up, and we're just winding, you know, carrying on and just talking and all these things that um, a lot of people behind the scenes, maybe the studio audience may have seen as it was going on around them. But you know, just all those little things just kept it fresh, kept it fun. And just had that kind of um, like everyone's in the joke together as well. Yeah, and, and I think um, you're you're right about the the podcasting. I guess you know podcast uh, the kind of new radio. Yeah. if that's a case. And and I hadn't thought about it quite like you've just set out black and white. But you know, one of the ones I'm enjoying most of all is two comedians. It's uh, Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura who do a podcast oh, yeah. called Two Bears One Cave. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, cool. and they don't. Like I, I listen to a lot of the guys who interview. Like obviously, Rogan is the top of the heap with uh, you know um, success when it comes to the podcasting world. And when his mates are on, they're the best podcasts. He does great interviews, and I enjoy listening to a lot of his stuff. But the best ones yeah. are when Ari Shafir's on, you know, or yeah. or Tom Segura is on with but him. Brutal. Yeah, and they're ah. and they're the best ones. So you're right. I mean, I guess that's the flow on from. You know, guys who would uh, finish work and go to each other's houses like you, or like Kim and Corbett, who I know used to kind of go to um, Coromandel and holiday together. Uh, you know, you yeah. think some of these people would just want to get away from each other, but they seem to um, they seem to bring that um, relationship on air. And yeah, and, and I guess it's a stylistic thing. The ones that I enjoy, the podcasts that I enjoy most of all at the moment, are ones where you can see that off mic cam uh, off mic. Uh, camaraderie and relationship going on as well. Yeah, I mean, if you can score a job where you're working with your friends and having a laugh, mate, you've, you've hit the jackpot, really. And um, I did that for for most of my jobs in my life. I've been very lucky in having um, jobs where I, I was working with close friends. So mm-hmm. Coming straight out of school, I, I, I worked in bands, you know, played played in pub bands with, with my mates and we were having adventures, driving 
all over the country and playing all these little pubs and just learning how to play in a band and learning how to play your instruments and um, just having adventures and, and it being fun. Yeah. Know? It was always lots of fun, you know, you know, um, in the early days with, with bands and, and, and TV, like I, before I did what now I was working in music television, kind of like what, what juice was for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and kind of like got used to being on camera. I mean, starting what now is still kind of a very nervous, you know, going national, but already having a head start, being used to being in front of the camera. And all I really had to do when I got to what now is just learn their systems and how, how they worked in a studio, like the, the, the communicating with the camera was a, a little bit easier for me because I'd kind of been there and had a few years up my sleeves already. But, um, but it was just mainly fun by the time I got to what now. I mean, mm. there were times where I used to sit in front of the mirror, like in wardrobe, and look at what the fuck am I wearing? What, what am I doing? What am I wearing this stuff for? Like I'd be standing there in like a, a in a bra and 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 like putting on. A, um, you used to watch Star Trek, old Uhuru or whatever her name. Yep, was. yep, yep. She wore red. To play her as one of my my characters, and I, I was honestly considering gapping you know just like <laughs> taking off and, and running off going what the hell am i doing i dodged a bullet there but stuck with it and you know had a few years of fun on that show it's interesting that you were doing a lot of music i'm just bringing up a picture on that i put up for you last night on the facebook page because i don't know this is the wrong way to do it but if i hold that up to camera that's the one i put up on the facebook page last night saying you're coming on and the t-shirt reads what does it read uh one day i'll get a real job so, you know, <laughs> but I'm still hoping and praying, man. One day that'll happen. Um, in the, in those times, like I, it was weird because it was stereo bus that came along, and I can still remember the music video. They obviously used the ring lighting because the eye, eyes were lit up with the yeah. ring lighting. I can still remember it. Um, you know, four eyes popped up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't remember them utilizing your music on what now, and I think that's an interesting decision because obviously you were musical. Obviously, that could have been integrated into the show. I mean, I, obviously, I wasn't really a viewer because I was in my twenties. But I don't. I like it was one of those things for me that when you were in Stereo Brass, and I was like, "Hey, that's I. I know that face." It was like the other way around. It was like, "Oh, he does music too." Rather than the truth was, you did music before what now, but yeah, but yeah. the rest of New Zealand didn't really see it till after what now. Was that a conscious decision that they didn't use, you know, your skill set on what now? You could have. There could have been a music there. I mean, you know, us Kiwis, a sing song around the fire. We could have been a guitar there every week. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm a lot less precious about it now, Pat. But back then, when it was, um, when I was doing what now and the stereo bus stuff, I, I was actually not embarrassed, but I just didn't want to. I wanted to keep them separate. Right. Which was weird because uh, I was talking to this about with with one of my ex band members from Stereo Bus. Um, few weeks back actually just before lockdown we were hanging out and it was like going, oh yeah you, used to be, you know talking about doing the show when that was all going on and I, I i would just cringe if i heard someone yell out what now when i was doing a stereo bus gig <laughs> i would die inside man honestly because yeah, i just yeah. felt like i was bringing this kids show thing to these guys who are in a serious band and i'm bringing hey tell us say something funny you know it's just like Oh, where's props get... boy where's props boy I bet yeah, yeah, you, I honestly, bet, yeah that, i bet you that was a show there. I, I mean i say i died inside but you know I, I genuinely felt kind of a bit shamed out about it and i just wanted like i, I wanted to i still did music stuff on on um on what now but even that felt weird for me it's right. kind of like when i was just mixing the two it just to me it felt odd i mean it wasn't but it just made too much out of it and, and you know, in the end, it kind of it almost ruined my buzz about being in that band because I I was so um, conscious that someone might yell something out during a live gig and right. kind of like ruin the band. Yeah. Well, obviously it's a double-edged sword because there will be there also would have been people that would have been drawn to Stereo Bus because yeah. they knew you from another place. So yeah, don't get me wrong, but yeah, cause, play cause, play the cards you dealt as well. Of, Lots of fans for, of the show that would turn up at the gig and, you know, they wouldn't yell shit out, but they <laughs> still, still connect with them and go, oh, yeah, it's, no, it's nice because, you know, 
it's, it's nice when someone comes up and says something good to you, right? Yeah, I, f I forget his name, and I'm embarrassed I've forgotten his name, but one of the early actors, Mark, it'll come to me, um, of Shortland Street. Uh, back in the day, he was also a theatre sports actor in Bits and Bits and Bobs, and he was accused of rape on the show as part yeah, of his character. Um, Johnny, Johnny, um, Johnny something. Yeah, and, and um, he, I, I remember seeing an interview with him how he was like, you know, don't yell, hey, rapist at me when I'm walking down the street. You know, it's not yeah. appropriate. It's not okay. It's a, like part of the character's narrative or through line. But you know, it's 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 actually really not appropriate. <laughs> and he told a yeah. story, I think, about how he had to go a few times and talk to a few young guys, kind of going, you know, it's actually, it's actually not okay. So, I mean, a bit more serious than yelling words, props, boy. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and old props, boy. Like, like we talk about. I mean, just to give reference to feeling like a family. Like I still see Mikey all the time. No, not all the time, but you know, we still keep in touch quite a bit we're doing a project at the moment kind of oh, cool. together and um you know like our, our dads used to hang out at the pub together oh like, wow props to my dad and my dad um yeah we're at the same workman's club and used to have beers together and that's we, we met through our parents and at school I, I actually met mikey props boy through his older brother clayton um who we used to play sport together we used to play volleyball together and Every time I used to go to hang out with Clayton, old Mikey used to be there, this little wee uh, spotty 11-year-old with a flat top <laughs> who knew that years later we'll be all working together on TV. Yeah. So you knew Props Boy, and it sounds like your dad, yeah, well, your dad knew Props Man. That's sort of how it worked. Yeah. Yeah, good old Rexy Carpenter. Something like Shout that. Out to yeah, so, um, yeah, lots of connections there. But, yeah, so seeing all, that, all those dudes from many years ago i mean uh, if there are any glory days in my life that will surely <laughs> uh be be the time you know the what now time and still get recognized for all that stuff uh even today you know and uh it's usually really good good feedback and and um quite humbling just to be connected with those people and, and friends and uh, I'm, I'm still blown away that people care about it now, I, you know? i'm i'm assuming that it'll be people in their 30s and below because yeah are, are people that i think what you, what you, you're how old <laughs> it makes me feel old mate <laughs> trust me it makes me feel very old yeah it's a, it's a that's a scary thing eh? like i remember um doing some work with kids in a school who were born in 1990 and i just thought the other day that means they're all turning 30 this no. year um it's crazy eh? it I is too crazy yeah, I, I'm doing a little project at the moment now. None of these kids were born when I was even on TV uh, with what now, you know. And um, it's like starting all over again, which is great. It's a good challenge. Can you tell us about the project or is there a bit hush-hush at the moment? Oh, I can tell you, I can tell you the basics about it. It's, um, it's, it's music-based, which is <laughs> – I'm mixing them now. So um, working with, um, I guess, more, more teenagers, like oh, actually the youngest – kid is nine and and they get it range up to the age of 16 17 and it's all to do with um ukulele oh cool yeah so it's um kids who are writing writing songs on on the uke and then we um uh help them develop a, an original song and we throw them in uh roundhead studios and this is this is for tv this is um something you're filming yeah Yep, this is going to be on telly and it's going to be online. And it's possibly, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, as I've gotten older, I've kind of like become more comfortable with myself. Like when I was doing what now, you know, very self doubty I still am, don't get me wrong, but I've never felt as good as I have filming the show um, uh, than any other project that I've been involved with. And are you, are you, are you in front of the camera at all? Or are you completely behind the camera? Yep. I'm in front, and I'm I'm just like the big brother, really, just uh, or Uncle Fadi, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. me. I'm I'm just there, um, trying to make them feel comfortable because they're going in to record the song with um, established musicians. So cool, uh, yeah. So the likes of uh, I heard you mention John Too Good the other day. Yep, we had a chat with him. Joe's John came on and kind of set the tone with us. Really, he did an amazing job um, taking two two young teenage boys 
who probably reminded himself of him, of him when he was their age yeah. and really polished up a, a song that honestly, um, I don't want to be too harsh on these kids, man, but two days before we went into studio, um, they started, they, they gave me a demo of what the, you know, a live performance. Okay, what have we got? We're going into the studio next week. And they started playing and they didn't sing at all. I was like, oh, nah, this is kind of a... So they just written the job. music? Yeah, so they just did an in- instrumental and we said, ah. hey, you've got John Kluge coming in, man. <laughs> who who want to help, you know, sing it, have a really good singing song. And they're, they're giving us a, an instrumental. And the guy sang, a uh, young guy, and it was pretty, pretty dire. Like it was monotone and very low and like he was not singing, he was mumbling and and we just encouraged him and within two days he he had a voice. He had a cool, voice, man. he had something that, and just that just that change from, from meeting them on the Friday. Usually it's a week, but because of John's schedule we had to do it within two days. So we we chatted to this kid and I just I just crapped my pants, man. I was like, Oh my god, two days time. And John's going to have to hear this, and and kind of um, potentially polish a turd. But this <laughs> kid just put, he pulled it out, and it's such a great story. I can't wait for people to see it because, you know, he just pulled one out of the bag and just backed himself. And it was, it was all about kind of like encouragement and just being positive and saying, "Mate, you got this. You can do this." Yeah. And it turned out really good. I, I've been listening to the song Hard Out ever since. You know. And there's 10, 10 episodes of these kids just writing these songs and, and them being great little songs and just turning it into these um, no, in one day. In one day, we start with them at nine, meeting, shaking hands with the mentor at nine and winding up at five o'clock. And honestly, I've listened to this um, collection of songs, 10 songs, and I'm so proud of these kids, man. And it's just great to be working with them again. I'm and is it, is, it a, is it a standalone program or is it something that's going to play within one of the other kind of kids' formats at the moment? Uh, it's a standalone. They're, they're just like 15-minute um, episodes all up with a, with a music video at the end, kind of like with a collection of shots of, of them going through the day. I'm just like, and um, yeah, I'm just so proud of these kids and just awesome to be, well, they're not kids, eh? They're no, teenagers, they're yeah, kids. But just so, just just pumped to be. We, we filmed the last show on the Friday before lockdown. So wow. We just squeezed it in and we're just waiting to do all the all the voice bits, really. But I just can't wait to share it with people and just um, give people an insight of, you know, because they're only 15 minute episodes, but you can you fit a lot in that time. And you can, um, and just the way that the mentors get together and work with these children, you know, it's amazing when you think that they're meeting in the morning and by the end of it that you know that they're, they're, they're buddies man they're, yeah so that's we've got cool like yeah we've got john we've got julia dean we've got um um sam from shapeshifter nice nathan king yeah just a whole bunch of really good kiwi musicians who are giving back to these um kids and they get it you know they they really um really get involved and it's just a great process to watch and yeah um and we just need that kind of content at the moment some good stuff yep stuff that makes you smile yeah for sure and, um, happy to be back on the scene to do that so and speaking of nathan king he's uh, for people who are watching the live stream he's up in two hours he's going to be coming in here having a chat we're well, not coming in here but via zoom yeah. in two hours as well so that's going to be a blast um well, pass on regards to that guy because nathan did a great job and he's just a you know i've known nathan for years as well yeah yeah, yeah. you just yeah, you know, I'm just really stoked that I can work with these people um, for a few days and and just really um, see how they tick. You know, it's a buzz for me. You know, I'm a musician. I've recorded it around here in my time, and I get it. I, I get what these kids are going through, how much excitement that they got for being there, mm. um, working with the heroes. I, I work with my hero. The reason I played guitar um, was learning Better Be Home Soon on the acoustic guitar. <laughs> And there I am, like 15, 20 years later or whatever it was, and I'm recording right ne- knee to knee with Neil Finn listening to me lay down my guitar tracks. And I'm going, how the hell did I end up here? 
Whoa. Isn't it interesting that even as you think about heroes and that sort of thing being a childish, not, not childish like as in immature, but as in something that children have. But when we come yeah. across them as adults, you can still get that kind of, whoa, what the crap moment. Oh, and I, I grew up, really? I grew up with uh, like my old man was involved in Auckland rugby and um, he had business interests. Or, he's a Catholic boy, so he had his finger at all sorts of pies. Um, oh. And so I had, you know, there was profile people around. And I'm not saying that we're all great mates or anything, but, you know, one of dad's clients was Martin Crow, And I used to see Martin Crow at the gym when I went to St. Peter's. And yeah. so I wasn't wowed by too many people just because they were around, not because there's anything, you know, particularly special about me or anything and we'd go to the Auckland rugby after match functions when he was the president of the referee so you know you've got John Kerwin and Zin Zambrook and then whoever the, whoever they were beating that day also there as well um yeah but when I started in radio and my very first shift in radio uh was for Maury FM where I did a mid-dawn and I they didn't want me to talk they just said because in those days uh Maury FM was still running off CD so basically you operated from CD to CD and you played the sweeper manually in between. And for people who don't know now, it's all just running computers and the computer will run three songs through with sweepers between them and then pause, which is great. I mean, that that, that capacity was there when I started in radio, but our general manager um, liked his announcers to be active. So he used to make us use CDs and have to mix them manually. And right. um, and someone who who's a, you know... Uh, a friend now, um, not best of mates, but, you know, who, who possibly might be coming on here and while having a chat, Jeremy Corbett walked into the studio at 10 to 6, and I would have been 25, and I was like, whoa. I've told him this story. I'm like, whoa. And and, and I'd never really experienced it before. And I realized yeah. just right in that instance, I was working for Theatre Sports Auckland. Um, I was trying to, I just finished with, I'd say that what I was going to say to you before, that was a pretty deep cut mentioning me and Juice TV. That's a pretty uh, way back thing. But, you know, I'd, I'd been working on Juice TV. I um, was working with Theatre Sports Auckland and I was just trying to get into radio. Um, and then this guy walks in who's done all that. You know, he's done the stuff on stage. He's done the improv comedy on stage. He's the top, the, the top of the game in radio. And I just had that moment, which was like, whoa, okay. Um, you know, and then you try and act cool, like it's all fine. But I did, I, he, he's the one person, if people ask me, you know, whoever kind of did it, you know, it was fucking Jeremy Corwin, <laughs> ironically. Yeah, well, yeah, well uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I still feel that way today, you know. I still, I still have that, you know, I, I have no shame in saying that. I, I'll buzz out. I'll hide it well, but, you know, I still go, it's that dude. You know, my brother still does it, you know, talking about Chris before. We did, we did, and Nathan King, like, we were at an event and Nathan King was there, and my bro came up and goes, bro, that's the guy from Z, that's Nathan <laughs> King. <laughs> you know, and I go, well, go say hi to him, man. He goes, oh, no, no, no. I said, come on, bro. You know, just stuff like that. So I, I think that's great about people, you know, where they can still be involved in it and still buzz out because, you know, it's still magic, you know. So these people that you see, like the Martin Crows when you're a kid, like, if, if I remember, um, I don't know if you remember, Count Homogenized on TV. Yeah, Count. yeah. Who used to grab the bell when he walked through the door to stop it ringing when he went to steal the milk. I remember that. <laughs> Russell Smith. Russell Smith. My dad went to Cubs or Scouts with him back in the day when they were kids. Right. And um, he saw him out on the street one day, and they used to film lots of that stuff at TVNZ in Christchurch back in the day. And, um, yeah, just one day walking down Manchester Street, and my dad says hi to Russell Smith, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, shit. My dad knows Count Homogenized. Yeah, it's hilarious. Just, you know, to me, that was just like so amazing. And he actually said, Good day. He said, Get it, mate. You know, I, I just hold that, you know, memory for, for years. I just thought that was nuts. And, you know, it was one of those things that I remembered. And, like, whenever kids would say hi, I'd, I'd always do my best just to give them a good day and, and say a little something just to, because you ne never know how long they hold on to that stuff for, you know. So just, the be, one of the best people I've seen who's done that is Susie Cato. Um, oh, she's amazing. She's awesome. I Because her husband worked at More FM as well, so I had a connection to her way back when I was young and she was first getting into radio. And then she's so lovely. In fact, we've been trying to connect to do one of these as well, but she's obviously uber busy at the moment teaching New Zealand's children all over again um, <laughs> via television. <Get> <laughs> so, it's crazy, eh? So fair enough. I messaged her the other day to say, look, 
If we can connect, that'd be great. If we can't, you're doing God's work. Just keep doing it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But um, we went to some event, some More FM event. Oh, was it More FM? No, it wouldn't have been More FM because I had kids. Whatever. It was some event um, at Altea Centre. And I, yeah. I had a couple of kids. Maybe it was something ridiculous like High Five. But there was a halftime break. So I wasn't associated with her anymore because I was away from you know, where her husband worked. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, saw Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. Little circle of adults kind of happen. And we're at, uh, if you imagine, if people who haven't been to Altea Centre, imagine... I'm just a massive freaking theatre. And obviously at halftime when people just bowl out of there, the doors are very busy. So we're almost standing on the edge of one of the doorways. Circle of yep. adults just talking. My kids are with me. And then I look over and Susie's sitting on the floor cross-legged just talking to my kids. And I'm just like, That's you are, you. If, if, you, if someone could bottle you, whatever you've got <laughs> and sell it, they'd be billionaires, you know? So there's all this mayhem going on, and her concern was my kids as she sat cross-legged on the floor talking to them. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Especially when you're a dad and you see that happening to your kids. Mate, that's just so special, you know. I mean, I, used to, I had a moment um, where I, you know, I don't know if you watch um, uh, Matt Watson's fishing show. Yep, sometimes. Uh, yeah, well, I used to watch that with my son when he was young, uh, when he was like what, three or four. We'd often sit there and watch his show. And I found out a friend of mine was going to be working with him, and I asked him to get me a, if he could just get an autograph. Oh, cool. And just stuff to my son. And not only did Matt Watson um, sign a postcard and left a really cool message for my son, he also um, said something on video and sent it through to me. Choice. And um, I was blown away, man. I was starstruck because I, I love Matt Watson as well, you know. And I just thought, this is so nice of him. Not realising that I was doing that um, with work all the time. I mean, when you're doing it for other people, it's, it's nothing. Yeah, but it does, you know, it does mean a lot to people when people take that time and people can cherish those for years, you know. So yeah. I, I still couldn't believe it. I often look at photos with my son and, and Matt now and just go, what this is crazy and you know, he invited us up for a fishing trip around his place and it's just um yeah we had, had a special moment and you know that's just something that we'll have forever you know and actually as as, as we talk about it like i kind of realize when my old man turned 60 so 20 20 years ago i um i had a connection with michael jones and in my dad's opinion michael jones is the greatest ever all black Right. Well, your dad's my man. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a I had a very tacit, very loose connection to Michael Jones that I felt I could connect with him. And so for my dad's sixtieth, I got a birthday card written by Michael Jones to Dad. Yeah. And a training jacket that had been off off something or other. I can't remember what it was, but it was like from him. And of course, you know, my old man who was uh, more senior and everything then michael jones self was just like yeah this is this is pretty dope and so yeah <laughs> so so you don't lose it I'm, I'm just thinking literally sitting here thinking now you know my my number one person for always thinking about wanting to meet has always been michael jordan because i'm you know yep. basketball nut through the 80s and 90s and that's why i'm sitting here at the moment with arthritis in my spine because we played so much but um <laughs> but i'm just trying to think who would there be and i think i wonder now if it's more it hasn't happened recently, but I'm now more in awe of a situation kind of going, how the fuck did I get here? You know, how, do, how did yeah. this actually happen? And I'm thinking about, you know, connecting with people. And, and I still get it a little bit now. Um, I've got, <laughs> this is going to sound really weird. <laughs> My kids aren't watching this. No, no, mate, just say it. But I've got gigantic balls when it comes to approaching people to come on this podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. So when the tragedy in Christchurch happened, you know, 14 months ago, and I heard that the um, Prince William was coming across. You know, I straight away sent a letter to my cousin in London because the only way you can approach the royals is by post. And he put it in the post here and he sent an invite to Prince William to uh, come on my podcast when he was in Dunedin. Because I'm just like, if you don't ask, you know, you just never know. One day, one day someone will go, yeah, okay. It hasn't happened yet, but one day they will. And I got a response from the palace, emailed to me. Um, yep. And that's what I do. I just, uh, I just, I try and get, I, I don't actually want to say too much about who I've tried because there are some still in, in play 
And, you know, yep. even though the philosophy of, that I try and live by these days is the rising tide lifts all boats, you know, I want to see all podcasts and all independent media doing well. I don't want to kind of go, me, mine. But, you know, there's still yeah, some little idea. Like- there's some, some little ideas I'm working on that I'd like to see because I've been chasing them happen. But I, I think, I'm trying to think, who who would I get that I'd be sitting there the whole time like this, like, how am I talking to this person? And I think about people like the Pope. Imagine doing a Zoom podcast with the Pope. <laughs> that would be whack. Um, you know, obviously any massive political figure for me, especially in America. Um, yeah. But I don't, yeah, the Starstruck thing, I don't know. It would probably be more like a, how the crap did this happen? I'm talking to Nancy Pelosi from my bloody bedroom in Dunedin. How did this happen? Or whoever it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always struggled because I, I'd be mortified if you'd meet someone that you really respected and they ended up just being an absolute... Oh, uh, yeah. Don't meet, don't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. Yeah, it's a but theory. I've, I've been quite lucky. I've been quite lucky where I've met a lot of people and just thought, man, they are such good bastards, man. Or, you know, I, I often do that where I just go, how did I end up here? I feel like, you know, that whole imposter syndrome thing, like, oh, geez, am I supposed to be here? Did I just, like, fluke something and accidentally end up, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, I've, I've been very lucky with people that I've met and, um, in the limited time that I've met people, I've, I've enjoyed it, you know, from all walks. Because, I, yeah, I mean, music was massive for me. And when I started off doing um, Cry TV in Christchurch, yep. I heard you mention that you worked with Petra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she was there as well, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah. She, she was on the show after um, the show that I was doing. Oh, there you go. Leighton. So um, she was from six till eight and we were four till six. So, um, you know, would would meet the odd musician here and there, and and I'd I'd be freaking out, thinking, Far out, I'm getting to meet this person. <laughs> honestly, I just felt like a a no one back then, and still felt like a no one when I did what now, and and, and always do feel that way um, for some reason. But I I kind of like disguise it well, <laughs> I disguise it well, but. Um, I yeah, think, I, but I, I think it's a healthy thing to think. You know, my shit don't stink. You know, it, it's it's dangerous to get to a place where you think your shit don't stink. When I used to work at More FM in Auckland, uh, people would yeah. say to me, because I mean, you you understand this to to a higher level than I, but you know, people are really interested in what you do if you work in these interesting fields. They would have been really interested in details of you working for what now, not just that you did, but you know, all the stories around it. So when people found out that I worked for More FM, although I was, you know, for want of a better word, the butt boy. Um, They'd still be really interested in knowing what I did, and I used to respond to them. I make I make coffee for Kim and Corbett. That was my response yep. because every every single day when my show finished, I'd go and get Kim and Corbett a coffee and bring it to them. And when Paulie Ego turned up, him as well, if they wanted one, and then I'd leave. You know, that was my yep. that was my job description. I make coffee for Kim and Corbett. That's my biggest my biggest job of the day. Even though I do a six hour shift, is to um is to get them their cup of coffee before I leave, and but um. It's- I, I look now and I I say this actively, my job, quote unquote job and what I'm doing right here, even though it's not really a job, um, is that I want to open the door for other people to tell their stories, you know, for other people yeah. to shine. And I always remember Ian Grant used to have this saying, because people would look up to Ian Grant as a parenting guru, and he'd go, no, 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 I'm just a beggar trying to help other beggars find bread. And I love that kind of idea of like, we're actually, you know, whether you are a massive musician or you are a, you know, IT specialist who I'm talking to about interesting technology or, or, or whether you're the flat earther, who's one of my favorite podcasts I've ever done. We're all, yeah. I'm, I'm just a beggar trying to help other beggars find bread. And, 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 you know, if we can do it together, then you get good content and you have fun along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, man. Having fun along the way. Cause we know that now. What's important and uh, after lockdown, have you thought about what's important to you, man? What what you're grateful for and all that stuff without getting too I um yeah, I don't know what I'm I'm intrigued actually. Like my yeah. my kids have been with their mum the whole time. Uh, the right. whole whole four weeks. But I'm lucky that through that curtain is where their mum lives. So literally we share a boundary. So I've yeah. seen I've even though they've been there and we did that to follow the criteria and, you know 
we decided that, you know, I've been in the driveway having chats and, and pretty much most, if not, probably not every, but most days I've been on the deck talking over the fence. So it's not like I haven't been without them. Um, yeah. So that'll change on Tuesday. They'll come to me and we'll go back to, pardon me, go back to 50-50. Um, yeah. But what I'm... Well, I'm not. I don't know if I'm necessarily looking forward to anything, but I'm intrigued by what's happening. Like at the start of this lockdown, you know, when you heard these stories about like the canals in Venice clearing up and that sort of thing, I'm intrigued yeah. as to what the byproducts of this are going to be. I'm intrigued to see if uh, New Zealand business kind of catches up in their technology by five years and realizes that you can trust your employees to work from home in fact they're more yep. effective so let's let's let them i'm fascinated by the idea that rather than this radio group having to have a 10 million dollar a year building maybe they can scale down and people can work from their studios at home and still be as yep. effective i'm i'm really i'm really looking forward to finding how the world has changed and the and, and and i'm not saying that this is a good thing this coronavirus but i wonder if some good byproducts will come from what we're what we're going through and i'm looking forward yeah. to seeing what those are if anything yeah um stuff stuff like that like, I, I hear lots of people saying you know when when we're going out walking now people are so friendly people yeah. want to say hi and all that stuff we had that ability to do that before Corona. Yeah. You know, you, you, you start talking. I was actually talking to someone about this um, on the train when I was taking my boy to school months ago. Just like um, this dude just came up and started talking to us. And we had a really good conversation. And at the end of it, he said, yeah, everyone's on their phones, you know, the whole phone thing. But, um, you know, it's still, I just really enjoy um talking to people and mm. I, I said yeah yeah it, it is really good it, it's a real shame that you're you're considered a weirdo if you just go up and start <laughs> having a, a chat to someone it's like hey, what do you want from me I, I just don't get that and I was talking to Siobhan about it just saying I said we we really need to start talking to each other more just having chats to people and yeah. um, just enjoying people's combos and um, without feeling like you're, you're not a pedo, you're not a, you know, if you talk to someone's kid, you know, I just want to say, hi, how you doing, mate? You're right. You're good. <laughs> hey, get away from my son. Well, you know, I, I hate that shit. I, I, I just wish people would be a bit more um, um, connected in some way. And hopefully that will happen a bit more. Well, I, I, of the I hope that those gains, and I think that's a gain that we've got from this will stay. I mean, often in times of trial, you know, and I'm thinking about incredibly serious ones like the Christchurch quake or the the shooting or, you know, the yeah. eruption at White Island or these real serious times. Or, or if you go offshore, you know, 9-11 or whatever the 771 is in, in the UK, yeah. um, you have these moments where the country and the world come together, but then slowly and gradually just go back to where they are. Yeah. And I, and I, I just wonder, I, I guess... I don't have I don't have enough faith perhaps in humanity human beings in general that that will stay but wouldn't it be great if we like I I'm I'm feeling challenged by what you're saying because you know I often have this conversation how I want to talk back you know talk back caller would call up and say oh, I wish those migrants were like us um and I'd say we'll invite them in you know the way the way that they become part of the community is open up your door and ask them out for dinner so what I'm challenged with right now is what you're saying going well what I need to do is actually be the person who keeps saying g'day to the person even if yeah. society has stopped doing it so I need to take my own advice about opening the door and and yeah. and keeping that going I, I, I'm happy to I'm happy to come across like the weirdo to try to start a mm. conversation. I, I can. You, you got to read the situation, of course. But if someone looks like they're just sitting there doing nothing, you can try to say something. And go for it, eh? I just think it's um. I, it's I, something that I, I remember doing growing up as a kid, where people used to talk to each other. You know, it's that I'm sounding like an old man now, but you know, so good. okay, boomer. Yeah, <laughs> okay, boomer. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm that, what I do that really hope, though, what I do hope that does stay is. Like you look at places like New York and other places around the world where people are coming out at seven o'clock in the evening and clapping all the you know all the medical people. That's sort of what they're doing to show acknowledgement. And I'm like, that's yeah. lovely, but how about you pay them more once this is done? You know, it's not yeah. it's it's nice to acknowledge it in the moment, 
but actually the way that for you know nurses nurses in particular but certainly those healthcare workers that are underpaid the way that you actually show gratitude during well potentially after this because government has to get to it is to actually pay them a a fair wage and look I know those people who are who are, don't even have a living wage at the moment will say you know doctors earn heaps but you know some of these things that nurses in particular go through or, or, or I mean like we've got it's been on the news a couple of times that I've seen we've got a retirement village team here in Dunedin who have moved in with yeah. with, with their with their people and they've now decided to stay during level three. I mean, I don't know what their pay is, but you often hear about people looking after the elderly being on minimum wage. It's it's not appropriate and it's not okay. And as much as clapping on the street for people walking past is great, how about we just pay them decently? I think that would be greater. And that's that kind of thing. If that kind of thing comes from this, then again, not a good thing we're going through, but maybe good byproduct and good outcome for, for some afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Those byproducts, um, no, those happy ones, are all good, aren't they? Mm. I mean, yeah, man. And what about you? You're obviously doing, you're obviously doing this uh, producing role at the moment. Um, what is life yeah, like yeah, prior to yeah. prior to the lockdown? What has life generally been like? What are you doing? What are you up to with yourself? Well, I was doing a lot of like, I had a I had that um, stage in my life where I was a bit kind of. Um, lost you know a few things happened to me that made me kind of like spend a few years in the in, in the darkness so i was i was definitely suffering depression for a, a few quite a few years and um took me a, it took me a real uh long time really just to gain confidence back to really do anything man i was mm. on my own little lockdown i've kind of been describing lockdown now is um as depression without depression right wow really so um you know i used to be locked away in my house by myself um just not really going out much and doing a lot and just really suffering really um for a few years but it, it, no just in recent times just before lockdown i really kind of worked my way out of that with um family and friends um just really kind of um boosting my belief in myself and stuff so uh, there, there was a lot of nothing going on there for a long time but um you know the good thing is that if you, with with friends and um, family and just chatting about stuff um, um a lot of things kind of came right enough to make things better so um i have been doing lots of other kind of tv stuff along the way through those years just right. in dribs and drabs just to keep it going but um yeah it's just just been a lot of um lately just a lot of music just um i find music helps me get back into my um kind of place of happiness and belief mm -hmm. again. Um, and doing music producing it to, to commercial purposes or just for your own oh, no, just like playing playing again with friends and and just doing live gigs and also um during that time i was also doing a lot of stuff that was off camera I was right. doing a lot of narrating. I, I narrated a show called The Mo Show, which is a kids' um, show filmed up here uh, that finished last year, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just a um, bit of music, bit of MC work, um, just daddying, being a dad. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a single dad, so I look after my son for half the week, and um, he's nine now, and a lot of attention and um, focus has been on just having joy being a dad yeah that's really important and he's um just just a joy to be around and uh he's with mum at the moment he's keeping the whole school thing going regularly yep. so yep uh, we're not quite next door like you are but, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, um, just just to be able to do a little uh facetime or whatever and just to keep in touch has been good over lockdown and um yeah, just bits and pieces, bro. Just trying to stay happy and just trying to um, just get out there and connect a bit more. You know, I became a hermit for a little bit mm -hmm. um, and just felt ashamed to be me. <laughs> it was weird, but um, you know, you, you can you can work your way out of these things. And um, thankfully, I've got lots of friends who love me and mm -hmm. lots of family members who care and. Um, yeah, you can just um, get that belief back and uh, just to do something that, that's kind of 
made me feel like, oh, I'm me again. You know, so um, it's just a really good thing. So um, I've met cool people who work within mental health, who are my, uh, you know, even friends of mine who work within helping people. And I've met, I don't know if you know, um, the Barter Barber. Have you heard of that dude? No. Yeah, he, he works with mental health. He, he cuts people's hair and he talks about mental health issues with guys. And wow, cool. Even even just meeting him really, really picked me up because I saw a doco online and I said, I want to say well done to that guy. Mm. And I reached out and we, and we, he came around um, and we had a beer and just talked about life. And then I said, oh, what are you doing now? And I think came around to my house and had a beer and just talked and said, I want you to meet my, my son and his mom and, you know, all these people that you meet along the way. Um, when you're having issues like my friend Props Boy and his partner, Kanoa, I love them so much, Kanoa from Project. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they helped me a lot and um, I thank them um, every time I see them about, what they did for me and yeah so just that just that connection again with friends and just being open like i feel great i feel fine i know a lot of people are going through hardship right now with lockdown but for me lockdown has been yeah look look we're all in the same boat where we don't know what the death is going to happen uh, over the next few months or years um but just to, to be able to talk and, and to communicate with people is the thing that I didn't have in my armory before where I just shut down and just thought, I can't talk about this. I feel embarrassed. I don't want to be a burden on anyone. I'm shutting up. I'm shutting you up. No more me. And um, um, it hasn't been the case with um, what's going on now. I've been very much in touch with people. I've probably been even more connected than I ever have been with people um, over this time, just because just catching up, how are you doing? Are you okay? Just catching up, making yep. sure people are right within my circle of friends, family. And um, and, and now and that, now you can add Zoom to your repertoire because you've you got it working, so you can Zoom people now. Mate, you're my first Zoom. This is I like, know. This is, this is, uh, A Zoom virgin. The Zoom cherry, <laughs> the Zoom cherry oh, has been popped. So yeah, yeah, I'm a Zoom flag, man. That's me now. <laughs> Look at me go. Um, I'm I'm intrigued as uh, as to the idea of happiness. You're talking about happiness, and, and I want to know from you uh, in this current, in your current life today, right? So how yeah. you are today and what you've worked through. What is what is happy, and and how do you find it? What does it look like for you? Oh well, ha- happy. Um, you know, to start with, and this will make my voice croak and um, start to break. But my son, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna break down. Sure. Yeah, my son is everything to me, and if if you're one of my mates, then you know how much I, I love my boy. Um, he keeps me happy. Um, music, music keeps me happy. Uh, playing music with my son makes me extremely happy. Cool. He's nine. He's. I, I just I play music from my childhood. That reminds me of my 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 dad, and. Um, he listens to stuff that I listen to, and we'll, we'll sing along, and it kind of like makes me have a moment. He has no idea the songs that he's singing are bringing me joy for the reason that he's singing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it reminds me of, of my dad, and um, stuff like that make makes me really happy, like tears of joy. Um, yeah. Um, working with these kids again makes me happy because it's uh, um, it's just. The guidance kind of thing where I understand um, what joy and what benefit they're getting out of, out of something mm-hmm. and just feeling useful, just feeling useful to people. I think that's it. You know, you talk about how you have big balls about going out and <laughs> asking asking people to be on your show, bro. Yeah. Well, for me, I, I have tiny balls about going out and saying, hey, I want to work with you because I'm that guy that feels like an imposter. So I won't. I won't go out and push myself, mate. I won't go out and say, hey, I'm the guy you need, you know, whereas that's something that I really need to do and get to grips with. Yeah. But you know, thankfully, I had a friend who knows me well enough to say, you got this, bro. I know you can do this job. You, you can, you've got this. And if it wasn't for him believing in me and just saying, you can do this, I, I would never have been doing that job and having the fun that I'm having now. And, and the amount of, um, the amount of, kind of stories that kind of intertwine 
to me doing this show now with these kids, uh, to me it's nuts. I'm, I'm taking them to the studio that I first recorded at when I was in a band that was doing something Roundhead. And um, that, that whole connection of being at Roundhead and working with my hero with Neil Finn back mm-hmm. in the day. And that's stuff that I, you know, to this day I still sort of scratch my head and say, I can't believe I did that. I'm doing that with these kids in a moment with us starting out. And it could possibly take them somewhere, you know. I just That brings me happiness and joy that I can, um, not not to push any agenda of mine, but just to ho- hopefully help them in some way. I just think that's awesome for me. And um, especially from what I've come from, being so down on it and just saying, oh, I don't believe in myself, to being the guy that's saying to these kids, I get what you're doing here. I know what you're aiming for. I believe in you. You can do this. Yeah, yeah. And to be that guy has just given me confidence again. And um, it's just, it's helping me help others. And I'm, I'm getting so much happiness out of that at the moment. Just happiness being around um, my bubble, you know, that I've taken. You know, and I've always been close with my bubble that I live downstairs from at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I live um, beneath a young couple who have got two young kids. Mm-hmm. And I've made more of a connection over there. And I'm, I, I, you know, just before we got in touch with each other um, before this podcast, uh, they they came down and they brought me pancakes for breakfast oh, and sat down on the floor with the kids. And, and it's the little things like that that I'm so happy about. You know, uh, I'm smelling the roses and it's, um, you know, um, a good thing. And I think that at times like this, kind of remind us to you know we've all been forced to slow down a bit and take stock yeah and yeah. i've always been someone who thinks about I'm, I'm very emotional when it comes to talking about things that are close to me you know and things that i care about and um and friends who care about me uh, um, are one of those things so um i'm constantly even though i might be by myself during the days here at home i, I think about my mates and what i'm what I'm stoked about. I, I've actually taken the time just to kind of um, just look back on my life. Mm-hmm. So just go back and think think about mates. And I've been looking at Facebook and checking out mates that I used to be at, at primary school with that kind of shaped my my sense of humor, my sense of self. Um, people that probably don't even know that, oh, that they, they might see me as, oh, Jason turned out to be on TV and all that stuff. But close friends like um like i was thinking of a mate of mine demetrius longdon we haven't talked about for ages but he was someone who was close to me like a lot of my cousins growing up I'm thinking about that people who kind of like directed me in the way of playing music yeah you know because music's been um i'm not, by no means the best musician in the world i've been lucky to be playing with people who are really good musicians and um it's kind of taken me on a path where I've met lots of musicians um, playing music and um, I've been listening to their music as well over this time, listening to lots of different music uh, that kind of shaped me. I used to listen to tons of music then and I've been getting into music again, remembering why I loved it. You know, you find something new, you kind of put the other stuff aside. I've gone back to all that old stuff and kind of, fallen in love with it again and mm. um stuff that might have been connected like i used to be married years ago and um a crowded house and nilfin was something that was um, part of our uh, something we liked and i kind of pushed that aside because it reminded me the, of my marriage and the breakup and ah but you know i've gone back to that stuff because I'm, I'm over all that stuff now and, yeah um, when i go back and listen to music that i listened to in the past it's like well, that was me. That that was my thing, mm-hmm. you know. Everyone identifies with music. And, um, the 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 marriage breakup thing is interesting, and I think, and uh, well, not interesting as in flippant, but uh, what I've learned recently, uh, there was a television program that I watched with my ex wife, and I loved it more than any other television program. And yep. I, after we separated, I couldn't watch it anymore, and I've come <laughs> come to a place where I'm like, you know what? And not that anyone's done anything wrong, but it's like I'm 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 going to make a choice not to let this get taken away from me, because actually yeah. I I loved it because I loved it. I mean there was an association there, but I loved it because I loved it, and so I've yeah. um gone back to watch catching up. It's quite nice actually because I can catch up and binge now because there's two or three seasons that are 
that are in there. So <laughs> yeah, so I get it. Yeah. And look, the um the the happy tears. This this podcast seems to be that or uh, the place. You know, you're not you're not the first, including um, hard asses like Richie Hardcore have shared a tear yeah. on this podcast and me. Yeah, just the other day actually talking about my mum. So it's what we do. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get the reputation but, for doing that, but it's what we do. Yeah, and if you bring it out of people, mate, good on you, mate. I, I don't do it to – I don't pull back the tears because yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want to come across like a pussy or anything. But I do it because um, if I start, then you'll, you, you won't get anything else out of me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be shit. Hey. I'll be crying. It's yeah, um, it's been happy tears, mate. Yeah, and it's been awesome to catch up, Jason. Um, yeah, man. Your show. Do you want to give us any details about it? Like, do we know has it got a scheduled a run date or a start date, or is that all still dependent oh. on editing after the lockdown? I've never been good with those bits, bro. Uh, all I know is that it'll be on um, TVNZ on demand. Okay. And it's uh, um, it's called You Can Do It. You can I, do it. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I just, I'm really proud of the show, man. And it's something that's been, like, even listening to that music over this time has been awesome fun. And I'm not sick of it. You know, I, cool. I just know these kids' stories, and they're all great kids. They're all genuine. They're all legit. It's not like a big setup show where, okay, you sit here and you say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all fly on the wall stuff. And um, I made real heartfelt connections with these uh, little um, musicians and the. And they're amazing, and I can't wait for people to watch it. And I just ask that um, whoever's watching this, keep an eye out for it. Tell your friends because I think you'll you'll get a smile and uh, pick you up. And and like you've got ten episodes, I'm assuming that's going to be ten songs. Is it yeah, going to is it, is it then going to be an album on Spotify and we can listen to it as well as watch it? Yeah, it'll be on Spotify, iTunes, or whatever I think. And um, um, yeah, as an album, bro. I, I'm really proud of it. I think these kids have done amazing. All the songs have got their own little thing. And, um, yeah, I'm stoked. Cool, I'm man. Stoked. So Uke can do it. Keep an eye out for that. And, um, other... Yeah, you man. Cheers. Oh. Cheers for the plug, Pat. Oh, cool. look, we'll, and, and, and let me know in case I miss it when it gets uploaded and we'll post it on, on the Facebook page and say, you know, have a listen again to the podcast and here's the show we were talking about and we'll push people to it and, and let people know. But for today, I think it's time for us to wrap. So thanks, heaps for giving us some time appreciate your story and like like i said before about opening the doors for people's stories i like to be able to um n not because it's like I, I want an exclusive but i like to be able to give people the opportunity to talk about things that maybe you know a, a, a stuff article or whatever doesn't get the chance to because they don't have the number of words or the space between ad breaks and so thank you genuinely for sharing today and it's been a it's been a great pleasure to to have you on for a for an episode well, cheers, mate. I appreciate being able to talk about those days and stuff like that in a, in a relaxed setting like this, mate. It's cool because I, I like I was watching your, your show with um, Tim Tim Bat the other yeah. day, and, and the whole the, something that resonated with me was when he was like talking about you know blow your trumpet a bit. You know, I've never been one to do that, but I, I will do that in, in pride of the people that I've worked with and um, everyone behind the scenes. They were awesome. They were family. Yeah, we don't really get get a chance that often to blow, blow our trumpets about something that's near and dear to us like that. But good times, and glad you watched it. And anyone watching, who used to watch what now back in the day, or Small Blacks, or whatever else I've been involved with. Um, it's been a yeah, it's been cool, and it's nice to catch up and talk about that stuff, bro. Cool, man, Jason Farfoy. Yeah. Thank you again. Have an awesome day. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for introducing me to Zoom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can get on to your brother now, the digital minister, and tell him that you've you've succeeded in, in life again because you're using Zoom. Yeah, and when I when I get in touch with them on Zoom, he'll go, "Jeez, bro, what is that? <laughs> you don't know how to use Zoom." <laughs> All right, dude. Catch ya. Take care, my bro. Have a good one.